Before we begin, let me make something very clear. This is not a sponsored video. I reached out to Tangem. I purchased uh, the cold storage device itself. And uh, this was five weeks ago and it just came in the mail looking something like this. Looks very easy to use, right? You got two or three different cards right here. You have three lines of instructions. The question you might be asking is, what's the difference between this cold storage device and say something like a Nano Ledger? Well, the reason why this took me five weeks to get is because they were sold out because of the different problems that Nano Ledger had just weeks ago. You know, the little things that they had been talking about as far as like the updating of the firmware, then splitting up your private keys and putting them in three different uh, companies. Now, we all know that you have to sign up for that service and there's a lot of different uh, uh, details about that. But for me personally, I'd like to have a little diversity in my portfolio as well as my cold storage devices. So the question you might have is what exactly is it and how easy is it to set up? Well, we're gonna do that today. It's only take, take two minutes to set up, but here is everything we know about Tangent. So first of all, you have 6,000 coins and tokens which are based and then it's also uh, the company itself is in Switzerland. What did that look like? What well, was founded in 2017, headquartered in Zug, with branches in uh, North America, Eastern Europe, and APAC. And just so you know, it's, uh, has a, there was an investment of $15 million by SBI Holdings. SBI Holdings is also the one that is a joint venture partnership with Ripple. And then the leadership itself or the team behind it, you can see that uh, we got, first of all, A squared, Andre and Andre, 20 years of experience in tech and management, also FinTech industry. BJ and Fernando, 20 and 27 years in finance and management, financial institutions, FinTech. Patrick, here's the lawyer. And Juan, 15 years of experience, expert in digital assets. And you'll notice that the tech partners, you'll notice some very similar names you may have heard of, like Visa and Samsung, because all these guys, they've actually worked with the banks for the chip that is within your debit and credit card. And that is the chip and some of the technology that is in right here for your private keys. It also has this highest standards of the chip security, which is EAL6. And EAL6 or EAL is Evaluation Assurance Level. And it's actually six plus for other hardware wallets. You can decide what that actually is. It's only at a five plus. So as far as certification, it's a little bit higher. Also, they had an independent firmware audit. This was actually done. Other hardware wallets, it was no, it was done by Kudelski Security, I will link that in the description, and they are a pretty powerful uh, auditing service, and they say that things are on the up and up, looking pretty good. So then moving forward, this is the big thing, security. And it really comes down to private keys. When you activate Tangent Wallet, because these cards are not activated whatsoever, but when you activate the wallet, the chip in the card generates a random private key which never gets exposed, neither Tangent nor anyone else, knows your private key. It is therefore impossible to steal it or trick you out of your funds. So you may be wondering, well, how the heck is that possible? This is how it's possible. This is the blog post made by the Tangem team. I'll link this in the description uh, itself. This is how Tangem backs up your private keys and creates them. You're gonna create a private key. Initially, before the activation process, Tangem Wallet doesn't have a private key. When you purchase the wallet, you'll receive a package ah, that hasn't been activated yet and doesn't have a private key. During the wallet activation process, the Tangem chip generates a new private key based on a numerical sequence received from a certified hardware random number generator. During this stage, there's only one instance of the private key. After that, you'll need to create one or two copies as a backup. And that is why in this device itself, you can get two or three different cards. And there's a reason for that. And we'll go over that in a second. So to finish up, a lot of people are concerned about, well, is it open source or is it not? Well, it's the, the app itself is an open source application. It's located at GitHub. I'll again, link in the description. The audit was done by Kudelski. These are the different ratings for the stores. This is also where you're gonna go with your phone to download the app. And then for as far as functionality, uh, it seems pretty, pretty simple to use. The, there's an app on your phone and then the card, you're gonna need a specific uh, type of phone, which most of us already have. And that is an NFC type phone. You know, the ones that can actually uh, swipe and do for cashless payments. Don't worry, a lot of the phones now have that. When you do that, that is pretty much all you need. Also, if you want to use a DEX, it is partnered up with one inch. So instead of using something like MoonPay, which takes an enormous amount of funds, as far as like 5% for transaction fees, you can use a decentralized exchange and use your card itself or Wallet Connect. And then here's the five big questions that I was asking and they answered them thankfully. So the fact, what digital assets does it support? 6,000, we already went over that. What are they? Good question. Those are Bitcoin, Ethereum, BNB, Smart Chain, Beacon Chain, Ripple, Solana, Cardano, Avalanche, C Chain, Dogecoin, and a host of others. So you can take a look, but it's pretty much everything that you have. Can I pay with my Tangem card, just like you will with your credit or debit card? You can't do that yet, 
It's not exactly like a debit card, but it is the functionality coming forward. What, it's all, what it is right now is a cold storage air gap device. What happens if I lose one of my cards? How do I restore access if I lose all my backup cards? Tangent Wallet is sold as a set of two or three. Now here's a little pro tip for you, for everybody. Uh, I purchased this and for some reason, I must have hit the wrong thing. There's two cards in here. Don't be cheap, get all three. Uh, right now it's uh, very cheap to do. It's only $45 or it's like $55 for three. So it's not gonna crush anybody, which uh, I wish I would have done myself. Additional cards will help you get access to your digital assets. The loss of all cards leads to losing your funds. If, only, if you only have one card left, you can buy a new Tangent Wallet and transfer funds to it. Again, when we do the process, set up the private key, your private key will be set up in the actual uh, card itself. If you, and then we'll do the other two and the other three if we have them. If you lose that card, you have a backup. If you lose that second card, you have a third card backup. If you lose that third card, why are you losing so many cards? Before you lose that third card, and you know you're losing things, why don't you order another couple? And lastly, if my phone is lost or broken, will I lose access to funds? The phone itself stores neither your assets nor your private keys. It only acts as a display by visualizing blockchain data. It is a tangent wallet that stores the private keys, which is why you can access your funds via any other NFC supporting mobile device. And this is my favorite question. Will the card work if Tangem as a company ceases to exist? And that was actually answered quite brilliantly here. After the apocalypse, <laughs> Tangem wallet will function without Tangem. So Earth 2047, this is all in jest, I like this, gamma c aliens have invaded and ruined our planet. No tangent servers are involved in the data exchange when you are actually paying for, moving around, and accumulating crypto on the card itself. So tangent is, is not even a middleman, it just has the card and the app. What to do without the tangent app? Let's just say things just go crazy. Indeed, during the interstellar invasion, the risk of aliens taking telepathic control of Apple and Google does exist. The aliens can force them to delete Tangem app from the App Store and Google Play. They may need it so that the Earthmen can no longer use such a reliable, secure, <laughs> convenient means of managing crypto as the wallet. But here they will fail. The app is an, is an open source code. If you need to install the Tangem app on your new Android device and it is no longer available in the App Stores, these guys think of everything, just open tangent.com and click, click on download APK. If not, you can go to the uh, repository as far as GitHub. And the last question you may ask yourself is, well, this sounds pretty good, but uh, what's the price? Well, right now, a Nano X is gonna cost you $149, Nano S Plus is gonna cost you $79, and the Tangent Wallet itself, like I said, a pack of two cards is $43.90, and a pack of three is $55.90. And on top of that, if you use the link in the description, you're gonna receive 10% additional off. Now, this is an affiliate link. If you cannot stand using affiliate links, you can go right to the website, tangent.com, but you won't be able to get that 10% off. So now what we need to do is break into my phone and actually get this thing rolling. I'm going to show you how it is. Should take about two minutes. And voila, here we are. So it's going to ask me to scan the card order. I've already ordered. So I'm going to click on scan card. It's going to ask me, tap the card as shown above and hold until the end of the operation. So there's two cards. doesn't matter which one you pick. You will probably buy three, which, which is a much smarter move. The card is right here. The phone is right here. I'm going to hold this at the back of the phone and just wait for it to go through the whole process ready to scan, tap the card as shown above and hold until the end of the operation, and it's done. So that part is done. Now it's gonna go through a legal disclaimer, which I'm going to scroll through and read diligently. I'm a speed reader. I'm gonna click on accept. Now the next part is gonna say, create a wallet, very simple. I'm gonna create the actual wallet because we wanna keep the wallet, or the actual graphical interface in the app itself. Remember, uh, the private keys and the crypto isn't stored in your phone, the private keys is essentially what allows you to spend and move the different crypto which is on the blockchain. So again, to create the wallet, tap the card, use the same card as you used before, hold it to the back just like we did it again, ready to scan, going through the process, done. So there we go, we've got one card actually done. Now it's gonna ask us a backup. We need to back this up right now. Again, it's all about uh, not losing your cards, but let's back this up just in case. I'm gonna click on add a backup card, very simple. Ready to scan, this is our second card. I'm gonna put this in right here, done. So then the next part, it's going to finalize the backup. Now we could add another backup card. Unfortunately, I only have two, I should've got three. Finalize the backup. Warning, You're added, you've added one backup card. 
when the backup process is finished, you can't add more backup cards. We'll go over that in a second. Click on continue. Create an access code. Very simple. I'm going to press on continue. I'm going to create a code. I'm going to block this out so you don't see it. And voila. Now it's going to ask me, prepare the primary card with number 0308. See these cards right here? This card right here? On the very back, just like every debit card or different credit card that you have, there's going to be numbers. And very small letters on the bottom right-hand corner, there's going to be uh, over 12 numbers. At the very bottom, it says 0308. Prepare the primary card number 0308. This is the one. So if you ever get confused, so we're going to scan the primary card, click the button. We're going to, again, go through the process. It's going to be a countdown. I'll cut this out. Great, and we're done. Take the card away. And it's going to say, prepare the backup card with number 0480. This is the one that we have right here, secondary card. There it is. And we're going to click on scan the card, which is the number one backup card. Again, same thing. We're going to scan it. Great, so a couple things. Uh, after I got done, it's going to ask me about the face ID. I actually had a cover on my phone, and for some reason it took two or three different times. So if you have a cover on your phone, sometimes the transmission gets a little bit uh, jumbled. So you might have to take the, uh, the uh, backing off like I did. So now it's going to ask me, would you like to use the face ID? I'm just going to tell you right now, you don't have to. It makes things a hell of a lot easier. So I'm just going to say, allow to use face ID. Do you want to use face ID? Yes. And voila. So instead of going, every time you want to go in here, instead of putting in the password, it just use your face and then off it goes. Now let's continue the wallet. So you may notice I have nothing in here. So we can manage the tokens. You can add as many as you want to. There's a whole plethora of different tokens out there. Let's start with XRP. You can do a main chain, BNB smart chain, beacon chain, uh, USD coin, different uh, uh, settings or different uh, platforms. Let's just use them all. Why not? Because who knows what's going to happen on Cardano, Cardano, maybe some smart chains, Beacon Chain, Dogecoin, Dogecoin main. And then, of course, it's also on smart if you want to use it. Solana, Polkadot, sure, Polygon, Polygon, Ethereum, BNB Smart, and Solana. And uh, that's about it. So we'll just click on Save Changes. And it says tap the card as shown above and hold it. It doesn't really matter which one you do. Just pick one because they both have the same private keys. Great and done. Now the next question you might have is, well, how can I transfer these things? How can I accept those things? So let's just start with Bitcoin. It's very simple. So with Bitcoin, here is my wallet address. If you want to send me some Bitcoin, go right ahead. I have no problems with that. So you can buy it here. I wonder how the buy, what happens with the buy. This is probably, ah, look at that. You can actually buy crypto with uh, Mercurio, whatever that is. You can use a credit card, but I'm just going to tell you right now, it's uh, probably steep as far as those fees. So uh, good luck with that. So anyhow, if you want to move crypto around, if I wanted to, I want to receive some type of crypto, it's very simple. I'm just going to copy this address. Let's go over to Coinbase. I'll show you how this would, would work. So I'm in Coinbase and now here's my Bitcoin. And yes, I move my Bitcoin every single time. So uh, I don't have to have too much on the, on the exchanges. So we're going to click on send. Oh, to that address we just copied. Blah, 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 7M5. It would behoove you to actually go through the whole thing. Let's just double check that. Come on back. Here's the one that's even 7M5. Okay, looks pretty good. And I'm going to click on continue. Let's send uh, 25 bucks worth of uh, Bitcoin. We're going to preview that. Take a look at the fees. Network fee, 55 cents. Eh, not too bad. That's my time, about 30 minutes. We'll see how that works out. We're going to click on send now. And then this is something that I cannot uh, stress enough. I would definitely... Uh, suggest that you use two-factor authentication, not something that sends your to your as a text message because there's SIM swaps, but use a Google Authenticator app. So I'm going to go get that uh, from my list of apps, and I'll be right back. All right, four four three nine eight one. Don't worry about it because every sixty seconds it resets, so you can't use it anyhow. And great, so we sent twenty five dollars. That's going to take about thirty minutes, and uh, we'll see how that works out. Okay, so it's been about 10 minutes, and we can see that uh, Bitcoin is there and arrived for uh, pretty cheap. That's the beauty of Bitcoin. It doesn't matter if you're sending $25 or $25 billion. You don't need permission from anybody. You can do it uh, whenever you want to without answering to any single entity, and there's no middleman. So that is the beauty of it all. Try sending, I don't know, over, over $10,000 from your bank anywhere else. You're going to get stopped for a bit. So the next question would be, okay, well, I got now I have Bitcoin in this uh, tangible. How can I send things back or send things to other people? Same thing. We're going to click on Bitcoin. We're going to click on the send button. And it's going to say, well, okay, what's the address? Well, we're going to need an address, right? Let's go back to Coinbase again real quick. Come over there. And it's going to say receive. Click on receive. Let's get an address. Oh, there it is. I'm going to click on the copy button. Copied. Come back over here. 
click on the address. I'm going to paste it. Then GK33, I'm just gonna double check that over here. Just make sure, GK33, 3CED, 3CED. It looks pretty good. So how much I'm gonna send? Well, I've got uh, 0.009, let me flip that into dollars. This is easy for me. So I can try to send $25, probably won't work. Actually not $2,500, $25, because there's always a fee, right? And of course we exceeded that. So let's just try for 2450, go from there. Looks like it's gonna be okay. There's gonna be a little bit of a fee of 41 cents, not too bad. We're gonna click on send. Face ID. Now, of course, this is the magic of the cards. If someone gets a hold of your phone, they're not going to be able to send off any of your crypto because the crypto doesn't live in the card. The crypto doesn't live in this card or the phone. The crypto is on the blockchain. And the only thing that you really need, or Bitcoin is on the blockchain, the only thing you need to transfer, send, receive is your private key, which is on this card. And what I'm going to do, again, it's going to say ready to scan. Very simply, I'm going to put it over here. Scan it. Done. And that's it. That's essentially all you need to do. Transact, transact, and successfully sign and send the blockchain note. So uh, very simple, very easy to do. And I think this is why I believe this wallet is the future because it makes things so darn easy. So the last question you might ask is, what if I lose my cards? Because in a nano ledger, you write down your mnemonic phrase in a book and it could be 12 or 24. And of course, when you back it up, you have it right there. However, with these, if you start, if you start with one card, you lose the first card. And then if for some reason you lose a second card and you have a third card and you lose that, what happens? You can't get your funds back. So I would definitely suggest if you're going to get anything, get three cards. And when you get down to the second card that you've lost for some reason, I mean, it does happen. Let's be honest. When you get down to that last card, you're going to have to order a new set of cards. But remember how we backed everything up and it said you cannot back everything up right now or put on a fourth or fifth or sixth card. This is why. If I lose one card from my backup, can I buy another set and link it to my existing wallet? And it states, since you can only create a backup and clone the private key one time when we're doing the backup itself, you won't be able to link new cards to an existing backup or a wallet. After purchasing a new set, you should transfer your funds to the new wallet. So to make this very simple, all you gotta do, when you get down to your last card, you're gonna order a new set of cards. And just like what I showed you, as far as like moving your crypto around, you're gonna move it someplace else where there's a wallet. You're gonna store it there. You're gonna go through the whole process again. You're gonna upload three different cards. You're gonna go through that whole process. And then you'll have your three cards. You can't buy a fourth or fifth or sixth card and start to back them up, back them up. You have to move it when you get down to that third card. That's it for today. So look, if you like today's video, give it a thumbs up, consider subscribing. Everything we talk about is time sensitive. Again, there is a link in the description, give you 10% off, but that's it for today. So thanks so much for watching. I do appreciate it and I'll see you on the next one.